The political rhetoric between leader of the National Alliance MP William Marlin and Minister of Rami Maurice Lake continued on Monday after the minister made a statement over the weekend that the National Alliance leader is throwing up smoke screens in order to hide his irresponsible decision making which at the moment has the country in limbo. The minister was referring to the sale of the Emilio Wilson estate which was discussed in Parliament last Thursday. MP Marlin refuted the minister's statement and gave his remarks during a press conference on Monday afternoon at the Parliament building. So here again, you run to the media because you feel you have a stick to beat a dog, but when it turns out that you don't have a stick, you don't have a twig, you don't even have a match stick, you don't come back like a man and say, uh, my research was wrong or within my ministry something was done that was incorrect, but you throw the blame squarely again on somebody else. The minister in his last uh, press release, because he is not addressing the issue, because in my comments I said the minister lied to parliament and to the public of St. Martin because he said the letter was never booked in. Now, instead of saying, my apologies, the letter was indeed booked in and the matter was closed, the minister again brings up all kind of old Nancy stories, two of them. Asphalt that disappeared from the airport. I had addressed that and when I did, it went quiet again because he was trying to again pin something on a local contractor. The asphalt at the airport does not belong to government. So technically, when he started his whole charade, one could have simply tell him, Minister Lake, you're out of order because asphalt at the airport does not belong to government, it belongs to the airport. And since when are you the spokesperson for the airport? But what was the reality? Government was given an amount of asphalt uh, to use for paving uh, any and every road, so to speak, on the island. Of course, we won't pave main roads. I discussed the issue with the sector director again. I said, Mr. Brown, there are several persons who have been asking uh, if they can get some of the milled asphalt, it's used asphalt, if they can get some of the milled asphalt to fix their road. I told him, I said, two things need to be done. Uh, there are some persons who we will give some of the asphalt for their road, but we also will pave some of uh, public roads that we cannot yet have surface because of the budget, um, have the maintenance department prepare that list. And I gave him one or two roads of which people had already been asking government, when are we going to get our road upgraded or fixed? I told Mr. Brown then also, I said, listen, as for the private roads, instead of having the trucks bring the asphalt to the depot at uh, Public Works, before we have uh, the, the trucks bring the depot at uh, the, the asphalt transported to the depot at Public Works, and then to make some sort of arrangements with third parties, let us cut out that trip and give the asphalt free of charge to the persons on the condition that they pay for the transport and they pay for the leveling of the asphalt on their property. There was a list of persons who had requested. We discussed this with the contractor, and that is what was done. Thank you. He's a practical pantofler. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <clears throat> so the minister makes a whole big charade about it. Asphalt was stolen, they see trucks removing asphalt, and asphalt went to the French side. <clears throat> I made sure, <clears throat> I wrote a letter to the sector director explaining him, uh, Mr. Brown, you know very well this is the procedure that we have followed. Um, and because it was the last days in office, everything was not 
finalized and documented as such, but you know because we had discussions on it. Again, it went quiet because the investigation that he promised the media, he never came back and said, this is the result of the investigation. I guess he is still investigating. In my response, I also wrote that recently at the time, I was informed by a senior civil servant that he was given permission at some time to take asphalt from the depot at Public Works to pave a driveway on the French side, in French Quarter to be exact. I said, maybe that is the asphalt they're referring to, but on my watch, I have not given permission to take any asphalt to the French side. Now again, the minister brings it up, but does not tell the public about the letter that I have written, and that is the reason why the matter went quiet. The other issue he raises is, oh, sand that was removed. Again, when he did not succeed with the asphalt thing, he jumped again on uh, the young man, a local contractor, who uh, owns uh, one or two uh, trucks, who was my driver, um, Mr. Leroy Lapet. He accused him of stealing sand from uh, close to the ring road and dumping it at the entrance to Buana Bay. Now, who is going to steal sand and dump it on the public, on the public road? Again, the minister was going to investigate and those responsible uh, will be brought to justice, etc., etc., etc. I never responded to it because I had no involvement in it. But question the minister. Question the minister. Wednesday there's a press briefing. Question the minister. Mm -hmm. What happened or what was the story I understood? The person who owns the dredge that was doing the dredging of the sand at the harbor, the harbor owed the gentleman in question some money, which they did not pay, didn't want to pay, or couldn't pay, and they agreed to settle the outstanding amount uh, by means of a certain amount of loads of sand. An email was sent to the minister, I think it is, explaining him, an email from the director of the harbor, that he instructed uh, Bobsey, who does the dredging, to take whatever amount of loads of sand it was from the sand that was dumped uh, in the area of the ring road at the time, so called for the drag strip. Now, should that instruction have come from the director of the harbor? No, because the sand does not belong to the harbor anymore. The sand was given from the harbor to government and it was placed there. So it is not your sand anymore. But that is where the instruction came from. Was it only Leroy LaPay who was removing sand? No. They were contracted by Bobsey, three truck uh, operators. Three of them were instructed, uh, requested, were contracted rather, to remove a certain amount of loads from there and put them at the entrance to Guana Bay, which they complied with. But the minister conveniently, he hears rumors that it's only Leroy LaPay who is removing sand illegally from the ring road. When the investigation was done, nothing again comes back. But you leave it hanging. You taint somebody's name. You put it out there to make it appear as if you are the transparent guy. You're the guy who are doing things the right way. Others are doing it the incorrect way. And today, you're bringing it up again as if uh, there are so many wrong things that you've got to be cleaning up the mess. The only mess the minister has to clean up is the mess that he and his party leader have been creating. The former minister of Rami, William Marlin, also read an email between the owner of the estate and him as he was the minister of Rami at the time. As mentioned to you before, I did not purchase the property to sell it in its total again. I have to think about the future of my offsprings who should be able to have a piece of land to build a house on. 
Furthermore, I have my own dreams with part of the property. I want to create a botanical garden with some models of gardens. I have visited the botanical gardens in Nevis, Guadeloupe, and Dominica. The botanical garden will be integrated with my plans to have an uplining, so a course for gardening agriculture. The idea is to start a course for about minimum 20 students. I already have researched this idea together with the Landbau Hogeschool in Den Bosch. So it's a college for agriculture in Den Bosch, a place in Holland. One of my former elementary students in Holland is attached to this school. The course will offer students education in husbandry and landscaping. The course will be an uplighting, a course of four years. The students will get their training by creating the botanical gardens and maintaining it. We will have a small size farm with some cattle, goats, pigs, and chickens. They will get experience with how to deal with diseases that might occur, etc., etc. After these students have completed their four years, we will then start with a new one because the island doesn't need that amount of landscapers, farmers. It is my big dream. I have lived many years between farmers in Holland and have the contacts to realize this plan. So that is why in our offer we mentioned 360,000 square meters instead of 430. As mentioned to you, my family would like Ujima to get 5,000 square meters to build a home for derailed youth. But the above mentioned can be discussed. I'm mentioning this not to hamper any possible sale to government. Make us an offer as soon as possible and let us take it from there. I want to get things over. I count on your support and diligence to get this done. Henry. Now, in the letter, um, it is stated that um, 60,000 square meters of land is reserved for a housing project. And when we had the last a meeting a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of them said, huh, you know which contractor will get to build those homes? I mean, these kind of cheap shot insinuating things. There is absolutely no agreement with Mr. Brookson to allow him to build no housing project. What Mr. Brookson asked was if they would be able to build some homes for the family on the part of the 60,000 that they will keep. As you can see, they have it in writing. They want to donate 5,000 to the Ujima Foundation to build a home, and they want to uh, train young people in agriculture. That is what it is. So there is no hidden agenda, no real estate deal with no 200 homes and, 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 and this kind of thing. And the area that was resolved, as you can see from uh, one of the maps, is the area close to, it bounds to St. John's Estate, which is uh, a residential area and basically all that is separating them is the rock wall. So the idea was that if one would allow them uh, to, to develop in that area, which if one looks from the map, this is the main road, this is where the present park is, park is. there's a buffer of 50 meters yeah, yeah. and then the six hectares would come there. Government would purchase all of the rest. So that is why instead of rainforest going with all of this and government keeping this little piece, the price has changed. So it has nothing to do with no deal. All of it was transparent, all of it was above the table, but there are those who are trying to shroud and cloud things. Reporting for St. Martin Newsroom, I'm Andrew Dick.